Yep. Oh, good. <laughs> All right. Hello, everybody. Nice to see you. Hey, Quentin. Hey, Virginia, people just coming in. And hey, everybody in the general public who actually has an attention span and might want to learn something about space. So I was just talking about how I've cut my hair super short and and how I kind of felt like my outfit, which you need to see in all its glory, was like a kind of futuristic space alien. <laughs> and then I was, I've also been going on this kick of um, watching Jesus Christ Superstar in different languages from different times. So I watched the most amazing um, Jesus Christ Superstar from Sweden from 2014. Unbelievable, <laughs> highly recommend it, so good. Um, and and I, all, all these different things. And I was thinking about what this all means. Like when I was a little kid, I was in Jesus Christ Superstar as a, uh, as a child at Michigan State University. I was like just one of the crowd and singing and whatnot. And, and, and then also like later in life, I've become a, not later in life, as a teenager, I like fell in love with David Bowie. So there's a star man, right? And Jesus Christ Superstar, just thinking about language and words and I've got my star earrings on, but how this all affects, I am from Michigan. Uh, I'm not from Michigan, I'm from Canada, but I grew up in Michigan. Um, but how this all affects is like the words and the ways that we're um, affected and influenced as children can really play out into our lives. And, and sometimes we just discount these things as not being connected, but they're all completely connected. Like Jesus Christ, superstar. It's not Jesus Christ, the God or anything else. It's Jesus Christ, superstar. And so this like idea of stars and radiation and going out and coming in like, and connection in, in that way has been part of my DNA since being a little kid. So I'm just, I was just putting those things together and like how coming back around to like watching all of these different versions of Jesus Christ Superstar is like, oh, it's, it's connecting to the past, but creating the future and the present as well. So just to throw that in, cause I'm, I spend a lot of time thinking about being uh, a human being and in a body and why I think the way I think and what leads to more free thinking and what leads to more access to really being true in and with yourself to the planet, to each other, and all of these things, and how important it is that we feel supported within who we are. And so, I want to thank Quentin for writing me a really lovely, um, a really lovely note about how, about showing up and how. Or to me, that's how I took it. How we show up and how showing up as your true, authentic self, and the more true it can be, really gives other people permission to show up as their most true, authentic selves. So yeah, I, I think, and that's what I feel like with this big embodiment turn and this social justice thing, which I put, I'm putting the link in because there's this embodied social justice summit going on right now, which is phenomenal. But it's so important how we show up in our bodies for ourselves and for each other. And like our number one resource is ourself in our body and how we treat that and how we make friends with ourselves and how we can find love for our animal body, this, you know, star piece, the stardust that we're existing in with everyone else on the planet, all of the, our, our reality tunnel, how that shows up for us matters to everybody else. We're so interconnected. So the things that I say, like you might think, nah, nothing, doesn't mean anything. But then later on, you're gonna hear something that's gonna remind you. It's gonna ping back somehow. So there's no way of disconnecting the good, the bad, anything. It's all, part of our reality tunnel and the more that we can share from a heart-based gut-based like mindful soulful way with each other the more we give each other permission and modeling and access to to ourselves in that way me tunes <laughs> me too yeah so it's like i feel like it's so important anyway and and the reason i'm also talking about this is because i was really lucky tuesday to go in as a guest lecturer for one of my dancers who teaches in a at Passaic County Technical Institute, which is a technical institute, but it's in a very wealthy area of New Jersey. And they actually bus in a lot of underprivileged kids. And so, and these kids can like have a sort of dance major in high school. So Cassie teaches dance there. And this is like ninth, 10th, 11th and 12th grade. So I taught two hour and a half classes, one for the ninth and 10th graders and one for the 10th and 11th graders. And I do embodiment stuff. I do lab on space stuff. I talk about like my experience and really bring them into themselves. And these were Zoom classes. So bringing themselves into themselves as resource to be able to deal with this moment right now. 
So I want to work with some of those things with you as a starting space today. And then we'll get more into space and, and, and keep relating it back and forth to itself. So what I started with with them, and, and you can see this movement of coming out and coming in. So let's just play with that movement. And in Laban, we might call that growing and shrinking, getting bigger and then getting smaller. And we can, or going outward and coming inward, right? So we could look at it in so many different ways or just like, I mean, there's a Qigong exercise where you're growing the energy and then you're compressing the energy. So feeling into what that is for you and how big do you wanna be? How small do you wanna be? Where is your sensation going when it, yeah, let, and, and it, it maybe needs to go in different directions, right? This is just the horizontal, right? I'm kind of going side to side. But if I take it into the sagittal, if I take it into the vertical, if I take it into these, the diagonals and try to, try to keep it moving with the sense of going outward and coming inward. And maybe the breath will connect to that. But the interesting thing is you're probably gonna inhale as you're opening and exhale as you're closing. You can try the opposite of that. Hold on, can I try it? I'm so used to expanding on the inhalation and then contracting on the exhalation that it's really a challenge for me to change the breathing. So I have to think, inhale and now, but then I think, oh, that's, that's, that's like a punch. Like we would punch that way with the exhale, or you might bat ma that way, you might kick that way. So coming into that, and, and now from that, let, let's, get, let's let it get really big for a minute. And think of as you're growing, as you're expanding out, imagine that you are connecting to the energy around you. And as you're coming back in, you're, you're planting that energy, you're connecting it to yourself. So there might be some self-touch, like you're radiating out into the universe and then you're coming back and you're connecting it to yourself. Oh my God, I feel like I'm in my Jesus Christ superstar, having my Jesus Christ superstar moment as I like <laughs> admit and take in. I don't know why, just as funny. <laughs> it feels really funny. So letting yourself really grow, expand and get bigger. And I'm just going to mute you all and then we are going to come back and... Um, and we'll come in, but keep growing and shrinking for a minute. Grow, shrink, let yourself really, how do I do this? There we go. Okay, and you can always unmute. It's just that, so that I keep the camera on my, on my thing because I'm in speaker view. And then start to play with your breath. Maybe like a windstorm. And letting it move out in whatever ways feel interesting and good. So. If you're not ready to move big, then have a small internal windstorm. Like really let the windstorm happen in whichever way is most yummy, delicious, and nourishing for you right now. I'm gonna shut this door. And so since I think all of you have actually been here before, then we can start to play with the vertical in that movement, the horizontal and the sagittal. So that we're sort of reining it into just these more pure, whatever that means, dimensions. If you feel like, oh my God, I really need to go out there or I need to just bring it in and be in here, then do that. If this is just an, everything is an offering, you take it or you don't, it's completely fine either way. And I also just want to invite, since to the people who have other people on their screen, for those people in the room, maybe look at what's happening in other rooms just maybe getting a little inspiration from someone else. Yeah, really, you can check it out. See what's happening. The resource of other. There is no other. The resource of other. <laughs> Seeing the smile. Oh my God, it's beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, and seeing like, oh, I just saw Dawn opening up her arms and I felt, I felt this sense of wonder and then Michael. 
Yeah, how is it when we're together in this place? Self care, care for other expansion, moving towards, moving away, moving within, moving without. Nice, so let's start to bring it in and coming back towards each other. And in, I didn't actually intend for us to go into that big exploration, but that's what happened. So now I wanna take it into a kind of smaller exploration where we're really, and it doesn't have to be big because <laughs> it's smaller. It can just be um, nodding up, down, side, side. And then I also wanna play with backspace and forward space. So we're just doing the basic cross of axis, the basic scale, vertical, up, down, horizontal, side, side, sagittal, backwards and forward. It could just be that with maybe our head, with our eyes, slowing it down and bringing your awareness into your awareness. And if you feel like it becomes too much with your head, you can even close your eyes and just do it small with your eyes. And I'm gonna add one more layer to this. So this layer, we're gonna use a breath. It's called the theta breath, which we've done before a lot of us. It's a continuum breath. Uh, Emily Conrad and maybe S Susan Harper worked this out. And it's just a very soft TH or S sound. So either a really soft hiss or a TH or letting your tongue just nestle behind your teeth and do whatever it feels like doing. And if you find that that breath is requires effort, then just let it go and breathe normally. But if you feel like you can kind of do it and it feels okay and good, then keep going with it. So we'll just work with theta breath for maybe two or three minutes, maybe a minute. Taking resting breaths whenever you need them. And if there's any micro movement uh, rippling through your body, that's fine or you need to move big, move big, whatever. Just starting to bring it into this theta. It doesn't have to last so long. It can be really short and you can breathe naturally anytime. So I'm gonna add one more uh, element to drop in here. And that is, we're just gonna imagine the theta breath as creating midline in our body. So whatever midline means to you, imagine that breath just creating this midline. And I'm gonna drop one more idea in there. And you can let go of the, the theta breath and just breathe naturally, but you're gonna imagine that you are like a lighthouse and your lighthouse is also like a barbershop spiral. So the light in your lighthouse is gonna start up and it's gonna spiral its way down inside your body, down to maybe all the way to the floor, to your feet, maybe just down to your pelvis. And then it's gonna spiral its way back up. So just taking your time to imagine the sense of spiraling a light in the lighthouse 
from the top all the way down to the bottom. Yeah, and if you need to move with this, if this is a bigger exploration to you, you that's totally fine. It could be like the whole shebang, or it could be very small and internal. Really let it be what you, you need in your body right now. And we'll go maybe two minutes with that. If you don't get all the way down to the bottom, that's fine. And if you do it like five times, also fine. So just however it works for you working with that. And if any imagery pops up and sort of gets stuck in your head, just let it go like a cloud or keep it. And then one more thing. If you feel like you only want to do the spiral down, that's fine. You can just keep spiraling down. Or if you feel like you only want to spiral up, that's fine too. So it's an option to go up and down or down and up or just one direction. But really keeping the awareness in the spiraling. And then wherever you are, let's slowly just bring it back in. And let's bring it back in by just taking your hands and letting them relate to each other. So hands are feeling each other. So just coming into a sense of groundedness through touch, through physical sensation. You can touch your head. You can do the dragons running through the forest. Legs, feet, whatever you need to do. Just bringing yourself back into earth energy groundedness in whatever way you need to do. Cool, awesome. I'm just reading the chat, good. And then let's bring it back and have a quick hello with everybody and just reflection on what you noticed, what popped up, what might've surprised you or what felt familiar, any imagery. And you can just unmute and talk. Go ahead. Uh, let's go Dawn and then Kiki. I was enjoying experimenting with extending on the in-breath and shrinking on the out-breath. I, I really enjoyed that. And I was thinking about the crura, which is that little muscle that's in the in the diaphragm that 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 actually does that, I guess. But actually, when you breathe in, it Ex shortens no yeah it shortens and when you breathe out it expands i was working around with that but i was enjoying in general that sensation more than i thought i would because i'm so used to doing it the other way thank you kiki um for me i had a lot of visuals um that came to mind which is interesting because i'm normally such a logical person that that doesn't happen so it was exciting for me so um your um how you started us, us off with the barbershop swirl that really got me going and then through all of the exercise i imagine like the up and the down and then i saw whirlpool tasmanian devil tornado whirling dervish all of these things kept coming to mind so it was great I loved it. <laughs> you know, I have to tell you, I had the same issue. And I, I saw like a, a gumball going down the gumball thing. And then it was like, you know, little, and then I was like, oh my God, this imagery is not helping me right now. Like, so, so I was, that was when I said, if you have crazy imagery, just let it go. Cause I was like, sometimes it really helps. And sometimes it's like, oh, <laughs> maybe it's exactly right. And maybe it's not that helpful, but who knows? No answer. Michael. Thank you. 
Yeah, I thought the the lighthouse especially was really cool. I've never tried that, but it was interesting to because it sort of connects the part of the body with the awareness of the room. So I was doing it with my eyes closed and I would still like, as I was going around, I would get a sort of flash of awareness of like the stuff in my room over there, over there, over there. I don't know, it was, it was very vivid and very cool. Um, yeah, so you were working with a huge kinosphere or a huge awareness. Like I feel like mine was really in my body. And this is actually the second time I've done this today. So I just want to say the first time I did it, I was imagining this lighthouse, but I couldn't see the light but I could totally feel the movement of the light through my body. So it was a really somatic, um, physical, kinesthetic experience, much more than like a visual imagery experience. But this time it was super weird, funny imagery. So it's like, imagine that all of this stuff is this time it's like this and that time it might be different. So I think it's an approach to life of just not thinking that every, that, you know, if we come to something with our knowing, sometimes we're not open to what else is there. So like coming in with the question is, is just amazing. Yeah, what else? What else do you guys notice? Um, <clears throat> when I first started doing it, um, one of the things that got in the way a little bit um, was my curiosity gave away to Kundalini. And then I was trying to sort of let that go. Um, and it was kind of cool. I, I actually did up and down before you said it was okay. <laughs> And um, it was, it was kind of cool. I liked it. I could feel it in my body. Then I started to think, and then it just started to get real. I don't know. I just didn't, maybe because I'm a perfectionist or something. I don't know. I just did. I didn't like it. So I decided to, to, to make sound. And then I used my eye movements and my sound and it felt much smoother. And then I stepped, I, I kept doing it when you were talking. By the time I got back up to my head, it felt like a strobe light in a disc disco. The sound was moving around like a Tibetan bowl mixed with like twirling a Frisbee in your, on your finger. And it just was like, it was like a little bit of light and sound and I just didn't want to stop. I just kept my, my head kept twirling and it was just so, felt so good. And then when I stopped, everything in my room, even the stuff that's on the floor that shouldn't be there, it felt like everything was supposed to be in the place it's supposed to be. Wow. And it's really weird. It's almost like the, 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 the Wegmans bag that I should have thrown in the trash. It's supposed to be where it's supposed to be. It's like almost like, I guess like a constant, like, you know, universe or something. It just, everything feels like it's supposed to be where it's supposed to be. And it's very strange. That's amazing. Yeah. 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 That's amazing. Everything is where it's supposed to be. I mean, if we could live in that reality. So I've, I've been listening to, a, I've been, um, I've been, I think I said this, tra uh, transcribing, not transcribing, but correcting the transcription of a bunch of podcasts on Buddhism and meditation, but very non-dogmatic Buddhism and meditation. And the words that have come out to me that have been really helpful are, grasping like if you feel like you're grasping for the thing maybe let go of that effort right like so we're in create there's another two words create discover create discover create discover so it's not like oh i have to find this thing it's somewhere it's outside no it's right here and everything is in the exact right place and then also this thing into the um i put the link in there but there's this social justice uh, embodied social justice summit going on which is really amazing. And, and a lot of the, um, it's been my process to try to deal within myself with the issues that are outside and to try to come to a place in myself where I can be okay. Having said that, also talking to other people and working towards other people feeling okay in their bodies. Because I think so much of the contraction comes when people aren't okay in their bodies. They don't have access to their breath can't feel their feet. They can't. So when stuff happens, it's like, ah, oh, you know, they're flailing. So they're going to start aiming at, at anything. So I keep coming back to trying to, to be, to embody my, my way into being okay with, with the whole system as is, which, you know, there's a lot within it that if we look at it, it's not okay. But one thing that really helped me, and that this is when, um, when Trump was elected, which I went through just a downward spiral of, oh my God, this is fucking awful. And there's, an, there's a story, it's a, a, Bob, a Babylonian story 
it's a Sumerian story, Inanna. It's, it's, it's the religion and the goddess Inanna. Um, and she had, uh, she decided to go into the underworld. And there's, this is written about in a book called Descent of the God Goddess by Sylvia Pereira. I think, I, I, don't, I can't remember her name right now. I have the book, but I read the book and it was about the wholeness pattern of this system and that you are everything in the system. So the, in the myth, Inanna goes down to the underworld, which is her sister's realm, Ereshkigal, to, and we don't know why she went there. And Ereshkigal doesn't know why she went there and she's pissed. So she, as Inanna comes to the underworld and, and Ereshkigal is like, she has to, she, we're gonna strip her naked and kill her basically. Like, so she gets killed down in the underworld. And Ereshkigal is so angry that her sister has come down there. She's like, is she here to steal my husband? Is she here to try and take over my realm? Wasn't the heavens good enough for her? So she goes crazy. She's so angry, she's hitting herself. She's so enraged that she's hurting her own body. That's Ereshkigal. So she's down there and Inanna left her servant at the gates of the underworld. And she said, if I don't come back in three days, go to the heavens and get help for me. So, the, so Nishabar goes up to the heavens and like asks all these people for help and nobody wants to help. And then finally, one of the gods pulls some dirt from under his fingernails, rubs it together and creates two demons. And he's like, okay, they're gonna go and help you. So the demons go down into the underworld and they go and they see Ereshkigal and, and Inanna's dead hanging on this hook. And they're like, what is going on? And they listen to Ereshkigal and they empathize with her, with her pain. And they just repeat back and reflect back what she's feeling. So they listen to her and they empathize with her. And then she feels so much better because these people have listened to her and empathized with her, these demons, that she says, okay, you can, um, I can, I can, I'm gonna give you something because I feel so much better. So they say, well, we want a Nana. And so they say, okay, but you can have a Nana for part of it. Mia, I know you have to go. <laughs> it's it's going to be, it's videotaped and I'll put it up if you want to see the second half. Anyway, but thank you so much for coming. Yeah, nice to see you. So Inanna ends up um, getting released, but Ereshki Gal is like, you don't get to have, you, you just, it's not free. You have to, somebody else has to come down and take her place. So and basically somebody else comes down like her her actually her consort comes down he's gone for half the year but she's inanna is then so upset about that so this is the these are the seasons but the when we look at the pattern of the entire thing and we think that within this entire thing i am every one of those people i'm a reshkigel i'm the demons i'm inanna i'm ninshavar i'm all the people and when i look at that wholeness pattern and be all the things within it like all the things in your room quentin it's, it's like you can't separate any of it. It's all one thing. So that myth helped me deal with this situation of what was going on in 2016 and, and the fact that so many people have made that choice. So it's like, I could be the angry Ereshkigal. I could be the, the empathetic demons. I could be Inanna who's just died if it's about to come back to life. So it's this cycle of life and this, and it's something that some of the people in the racial justice talk on the panel talked about. And that was like, when we have no relationship with death and in our, this American culture, we really try not to ever see it. We don't engage with it. Like the woman who was talking about is Mexican. She talks about the celebration, the day of the dead and how death is something that we also celebrate. We laugh. We don't, it's not this thing we have to hide from. This not this horrible threat that's you know ending everything. So just I, I don't know how we got into this huge life and death, but this wholeness pattern idea. It's your idea of seeing all the things in your room and going, yes, they belong here. And, and when we can come into ourselves and be like, all of the stuff. There's room for all of the stuff. And and when I can heal or understand or be with all of it in myself, it's not so threatening when it's outside of me which doesn't make it all okay, right? It's just one way of dealing with it. So it's one way to be able to be big enough. And there's one more thing that I did. And this, this was the other thing that helped me deal with Trump. And it was, I played the piano. I pounded it out. I like, I just let my body express what needed to be expressed. I was playing all the like, just uh, music, like all the, what the diminished and the minors and the, uh. and then it was like, oh, okay. This is how it is. 
So it didn't make it any easier on the, on the one hand. And on the other hand, it was like my soul had a chance to breathe and I could see this darkness within myself and go, okay, it's not really outside. And having said that, you know, that's just my version of dealing with it. It's different for every person. So we have to honor that. Okay, that was a huge, huge waffle. But I feel like that's, you know, when we can look at an entirety and not separate it out, there's, there's something very different to that. And I feel like this space idea is very helpful in the entirety because we're starting to be put the awareness into that as well. All right. Anyone else want to notice anything, anything that happened within all of those places, anything that came into your body or your awareness? It can be anything because we all benefit so much when each person adds their voice to the group. Dawn. I've been studying this little book, which is like brain exercises for kids with special needs. And there's this whole spiral thing with the ball. So I was enjoying um, the spiral. It's like an exercise of passing the ball around and around and around in a spiral. I just like seeing that connection there. Oh, and Virginia has just written a huge thing. I want to I want to read it because I feel like this is this is the Inanna and Ishtar, yeah, Areshka Gel, the triple goddess is. So here is her take. She is. Do you want me to say it, or Virginia? You want to say it? Wait, we can't hear you. It's not my take. I can uh, post. Uh, I did a, a research on this because myths and archetypes is what I do, and it's yeah. one, one of the articles I had found back in the day. One of the many, many articles. There's, it's uh, the oldest myth I think in, in found uh, the Epic of Gilgamesh. Yeah. So, uh, but in Nana Ishtar and Rashki Kaur have been my love since I was sixteen. So I've been studying it since then. <laughs> And this is just a little take. Basically, there were reasons to believe that she wanted to overtake the underworld, but there's so many layers to that story. Like Inanish and Reshkiga are actually the same person. It's like Jesus going into the underworld and then resurrecting. There's all yes, totally. And it was also like the first epic poem that was written by a woman and um, that we know of, right? So this, there's a lot to this this whole thing. All right. Let's let's so it's all written in there if you want to read it. I'm not going to read it out loud right now, but I, I like I have a song in my band called Inanna. It's Inanna Reshka Gil. One goddess is queen of heaven, the other the queen of hell. And it goes on and on. And it kind of comes from everybody's point of view, like Ninshabar sometimes, sometimes the demons, like sometimes the Reshka Gel is saying, ah, you don't belong here. Anyway, okay, so let's get up and let's move some more. Um, actually, I want to move with music, and the music that we're going to move to is a um, a woman that I'm friends with, and her name is Marilyn Carino, and this is a version of the David Bowie song called Modern Love, um, and it's very different. So what I want to do while we're doing this movement is invite you to move in any way that feels good to you, of course, but I also want to invite you to keep coming back to the dimensional cross of axis, to the up, down, the side, side, the backward, forward. So do all the things you need to do, grow and shrink, have emotions, let it out, but then come back whenever you feel like it. In, it could be within that to the up, down, side, side, forward, backward. I just love this song, this version of this song.
to dance with you. Oh. And so what did you notice and what, what kind of exertions and recuperations did you find were most supportive or what did you notice? I'm coming in with a bit of a weird state today on uh, an intentional community page of mine. Somebody posted some really intense conspiracy theory stuff last night, which has been on my head. And then this morning I found out that my aunt passed away. So I found this healing and I found really the idea of being with everything, like everything is, even if I don't agree with it, even if it does not feel safe, even if it's emotional and concerning to just allow has been really great and I was able to let go into that and uh and it was good it's a, it's a it's a part of the process that I'm doing now processing so that's that's good thank you for this today thank you and I also just want to I'm going to honor that because I also lost somebody today and it's like yeah it's a friend of mine actually who is like a person I know from the movement world but you know when you when you go into these um these 
uh, retreats where you're studying movement intensively or whatever, like you develop like family with the people in those retreats. And you also like the, the like, it's, so it's somebody that I was at a bunch of different Liz Koch uh, workshops with and who came and visited me, stayed at my apartment in New York, like, and a real free spirit, older gay man who just like was amazing. Like everything you need in a friend. And, and he got a rare form of connective tissue cancer and like, I just found out today, but I knew he had it. And I actually feel super grateful to have been able to be in touch with him, sending him pictures of my cats because he's a cat person, you know, just whatever it means. So I feel like, you know, and also I was thinking about him this morning. I mean, I knew this thing was going on, but just how we connected we are at so many levels that we do not see, can't, you know, measure, but they're there. And, 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 and I think that that's part of embodiment is recognizing the wholeness pattern, that all of these things are there, that we're so related to each other. And so thank you for sharing your grief moment so that I can express mine. It's really selfish. But yeah, yeah, but that's it, right? And it's the, the stuff that we don't talk about. Anybody else want to say anything or have anything that they noticed, anything that, that came up or came into their reality? Oh, Don has to go. All right. Oh, that's so nice. Malaya said, I have been feeling a strong sense of my body moving inside a bigger body and the song helped me go deeper into it. That is beautiful. That's wonderful. And that's it, right? Like where's these layers of awareness, these layers of body, these layers, these layers of, of everything. Um, that's beautiful. Anyone else want to say anything or, or anything? I mean, it could be something that came up in your life. Like our, this is the moment to be in community and share with people, right? So. My breath. <clears throat> Go ahead, Quentin. Yeah, toward the, um, like, I, like I do other embodiment classes um, that do movement. Um, and so I pick little things that, that are said um, in some of the classes. And, um, but this one actually came from a meditation class and it was something from a meditation class or, or breath work class that I mixed in with, with the delicious stuff that we did with the last thing. So I mixed in the delicious stuff um, with the spiral and um, because I just felt like doing that. Um, I added the recovery. The recovery was just a sense of gravity at the end, which was good. But I felt this kind of thing where like there a banshee came out of my body and was just like coming out around my room. It was like my breath became really alive. Like 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 it actually has a separate <laughs> personality or something. It just it felt it feels very alive inside my body as opposed to being like a thing or a tool or something that I have to, you know, um rev up and um that's very different um for me so uh, that experience i'm sure it'll it's impermanent and it'll go but my breath really feels like it's like some kind of separate being that's alive that's so interesting yeah. yeah all of these ideas or these images or these connections and you know i think that we all because of our interests and our our realities are, are you know different but so the, the sparks, like, where is your stardust? You know, like, because you talked about the art thing and owning being an artist and owning within, you know, this culture of the world that we're in, what that means. And I mean, I feel like actually weirdly with this pandemic, like it's given me such artistic freedom and, and a chance to express because like, you know, I'm, I, I can put something up on Facebook and then 400 people have seen it. And it's like, wow. You know, if I do a dance performance, if I get a hundred people, I'm lucky, right? So it's like, whether they watch one second of it or they watch the entire thing, it's still exposure. And it's still on some energy level shifting things are happening. And it's something that actually um, Daniel Ingram said, and he's another meditation weirdo person who I love, but he said, 
the, the thing about now is that we have this internet, we have this capacity to reach out to people all over the world in different communities when we have a shared interest and learn more and, and you know, be alive in that space together. So for me, and that's exactly why I'm doing this class is because this is the most sort of, not the most, but one of the most alive spaces for me. And I love that Lindsay is still moving and dancing. <laughs> I'm like, totally loving that. Um, anyone else wanna say anything? I feel like we may have come to the end of this. We've like, like a lot of people had to pop out early today. And so there's the, the natural life and death cycle of any class. It may be, have, maybe we have arrived at the end. <laughs> and yeah, so thank you guys. Thank you for, so much for being here. And I am going to stop recording. Although I always stop recording then somebody says a gem and I'm like, oh, oh well. <laughs>